So, this is where I left off in part one, uh, that first proof of some parallelogram properties. Um, the second proof, and you know, we start with the same given, and we're gonna, the given is it's a parallelogram, and I, I think my letters are all the same, A, B, C, and D in a consecutive order here. Uh, so the given, if it's a parallelogram, it's got to have two sets of parallel sides that are opposite of each other. Um, now, I said there was five things we had to prove. There's five. We're, there's five. Five things we had to prove. Not really. The parallelogram definition, that sides are parallel, done. So that's one of the five. The last proof, we proved that sides, opposite sides are congruent and that opposite angles are congruent by a rotation and by angle side angle proving that triangles are congruent. So we got three things sort of down we've talked about. The fourth one was that consecutive angles, that these two angles are supplementary. We don't have to prove that because we already did that a long time ago when we proved that same side interiors are supplementary. So we got four of these things proven already. The fifth one was about the diagonals and the fact that they bisected each other. So if I wrote this in words, I would say diagonals bisect each other. I want to actually write it, um, you know, I want to actually prove this in terms of some letters on here as well. So I'm going to jump to that in a moment here. So the next thing you do is actually draw the diagonals in. Draw both. There's BD. We had him before. Now we've got AC on there. We've got the two diagonals, which give us something a little different than the last one. We've got four different triangles to look at. Um, and we can pick any pair to look at. We can either go top and bottom, or we could go left and right. It doesn't matter which one we do. They, they get us the same spot. Think about this for a second. If we're trying to prove that the diagonals bisect each other, what would have to come right before that in the proof? Like to say that this diagonal cuts this in half, what would we have to prove? Think about that for 30 seconds. And hopefully as you're thinking about that, you realize that you would need to describe this point right here. I'm going to call it M. If they really bisect each other, I think you all understand that would imply that MC would have to be equal to AM. And not only that, but MB would also have to be equal to MD. So there's two things we're really trying to get to. If we can prove that these parts are congruent, we can say the diagonals bisect each other. So the start of this proof is pretty darn simple. You could do this on your own. I would recommend you start this on your own. Maybe pause it right now. See if you can get four or five steps, prove some triangles are congruent. You know, I'll give you the given, the obvious one. If you want to just arrow it down there, you can do that and have step one done. Here's my recommendation. Go with triangle AMB, AMB being, being the triangle on the left. Try to prove that the triangle on the left is congruent to the triangle on the right, and then see if you can get to this. And again, you could do the top and the bottom or the left and the right, but we're just going to go left and right, I think, on this one. Pause it. Go for it. Give yourself a minute, couple minutes. Five minutes it might take, ten minutes, I don't know, a couple minutes, two minutes, give it a try. So hopefully this is what you have down there. Triangle AMB, congruent to triangle CMD, I've just rotated it again, it's another 180 degree rotation. I don't know how I'm going to get there, um, but I do have some information from before that we could use. Um, in the last proof we did, we proved something Oh, look at this. Wait a minute. We proved something about sides and about angles. We can use that stuff in this proof since we did that one before. Um, the other thing you might be tempted to use is the vertical angles on here. You certainly could have a vertical angle step. I'm not going to include it, but I could. Um, the reason I'm not going to include it is because I already had these two angles from before. I had my alternate interiors. I'm going to use those again. Um, so I'm going to use BAC, BAC is my new one, the top angle here, and then DCA, this angle here. You could certainly avoid that one and use vertical angles on here, nothing wrong with that. Um, I just used the same thing on both of these, a pair of alternate interior angles. Uh, and you could certainly replace one of these with vertical angles, but you need two pairs of angles. So either a pair of alternate interiors and the vertical angles you see, or go with both of mine. Now. Angles isn't enough, I need a side. Um, as I said a few minutes ago, you know that this side and this side are congruent because we already proved something about parallelograms. We proved that opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. And you're going to see these, move this out of the way, people. Um, you're going to see me use this symbol instead of writing the word parallelogram. Opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal, they're congruent. 
hopefully that congruent symbol shows up on your paper. So this just saves your writing. You can use the symbol and you'll see it in your textbook quite a bit. And you'd probably use it on a proof for homework tonight. Something about parallelograms. Um, so you can use the symbol on there, literally just draw a little parallelogram. So we've already proven it in the last one, we'll use it now. Now you've got enough, you can definitely prove these triangles are congruent. Um, if you use my alternate integers, I'd go angle, side, angle. If on your paper you used <coughs> vertical angles, you won't use the same thing. You would probably do angle, angle, side, or angle, angle, side. Either way, it would change to angle, angle, side. It's still a rotation. This thing's still being rotated around point M to get congruence. And now we can go for the parts. If you look at the letter order, it's pretty obvious that AM is congruent to CM. AM congruent to CM. And of course the other one, BM, congruent to DM. BM, DM. Got them. So just by doing that, we've sort of already done this. If I say that these parts are congruent because of CPCTC, I can now say, hey, conclusively, the diagonals bisect each other because I understand what bisect means. I understand bisect means cut into two equal parts. So these are the two equal parts for this diagonal. These are the two equal parts for that diagonal. You could also say like point M bisects both of them because I understand what bisect means, cut into two equal parts. So there you go. That's all the proof you need for this thing. Um, the rest of this is just examples. I've talked about this already. I'm going to skip that talked about transformations. All of these are based on a rotation, 180 degree rotation for transformations to prove any one of these. Um, I'm going to give you some givens on your paper. I don't know if you had these because I don't think I had, you didn't draw the diagonals on the paper I gave you. This is a really nice parallelogram, N-I-C-E, and point M is that point that where these diagonals intersect each other. Um, See if you can answer all these questions and justify them with a reason. Something you, a reason being something you know about parallelograms now. So I'm just going to go to the part three on here. Have at it. Go for it. This is conclusion of part two. Should be able to get one, two, three, four, five, six answers and six justifications. And I'll be back in a moment.